Hey guys, in this video I'm going to go over machining the Z-axis C7 ball screw for the G0602C and C conversion. As I mentioned in video number two, my screws came from Linear Motion Brain 2008's eBay store. And you can see here that I just cut off about six inches using a Dremel uh, cutoff wheel. Now an angle grinder would be way faster, but um, I believe the reason why I used the Dremel is I was cutting at night and I didn't want to fire up the angle grinder and wake up the house. So uh, you're not going to be able to cut it with a saw because these screws are very, very hard and uh, they're actually difficult to turn on a small lathe like the G0602, but it can be done. So the first thing you're going to need is a couple of, uh, you're going to need a collet to hold the screw and you're going to need a bushing to support the backside of the spindle. And the collet is what I'm making right here. Now the outside diameter is not critical and I want to say it was about four inches overall length. And then uh, you just bore it to get it a nice fit on your, uh, on your ball screw. And I believe the 20 millimeter ball screws are actually... They're either a half millimeter undersize or a half millimeter over. I want to say they're a half millimeter under. So you end up turning it to like 19 and a half millimeters. And then using my 5C collet block over on the mill, I machined three grooves into it to be used on my 5C collet chuck. Now, if you're going to do this on a, you know, on a, a four jaw chuck, then of course you'll want to machine um, four slots in it. But uh, either way works. Um, my collet chuck runs pretty dang true. And so uh, that's why I didn't decide to use the four jaw. And then the bushing for the backside of the lathe, um, I just made this out of a piece of, I want to say this is just two inch aluminum. It's probably uh, close to two inches um, you know, thick as well. And the idea here is when you have the big long um, ball screw hanging out the back of your spindle, you don't want it whipping around. And also the, the ball nut is going to be on the back side of the spindle as well. So you're going to have quite a bit of weight back there. So these dimensions aren't critical at all. Basically just measure, uh, the only two dimensions that are critical are the bore, which needs to hold your, uh, your ball screw. And then the, um, the part that I'm gripping in the chuck right now, that's going to press or just, you know, very, very lightly uh, fit press fit into the back of your spindle. And here you're going to be able to see me put this to use. Now this, this clip right here, I just barely shot this the other day. This, the, the turning footage is all really old, but, um, I didn't get any video of that, uh, of the, of me actually showing you how this uh, bushing works on the backside. So you can see here, it just slides in the spindle. The screw fits really nice. Now, uh, I don't have another 20 millimeter screw, but I have this, uh, this 16 millimeter screw. So one thing that's really cool is when you, when you grip the screw using the collet and then you come back here, you can actually uh, thread that nut up to the bushing a little bit. And that kind of clamps the whole thing together really nicely and uh, nothing's flying around. And yeah, it, it worked really well. So here you can see, I'm going to speed up the footage quite a bit uh, so we can just kind of burn through this here. I'm just facing off the really rough cut that I made uh, with that Dremel. And I don't know if you can tell, but the outside of the screw is very shiny and then the steel is very dull towards the center. That shiny part is where it's hard. So once you machine past the threads and then a little bit into the root of the thread or into the, uh, you know, that first part of the material itself, uh, that's the really, really hard stuff. And then it gets pretty soft and it's easy to machine. The reason we need to do some machining here is after you get the, uh, the length, totally figured out for the length of the screw, you need to remachine the bearing surface for the non-driven end of the screw. That's the end we're working on. The threaded end of the screw is, is on the other side of the lathe, and that's uh, where we're going to be driving the screw uh, with the stepper motor. So what I did was I machined it as close as I felt comfortable, and then I actually filed uh, to get the bearing fit, and it took a lot of filing. Uh, but I finally got um, exactly the fit I was looking for. Um, it's a, it's a tight hand press fit. Um, it's actually difficult to get off. You can see I've got to use two hands, but it slides on. It feels really, really nice. And then I can pull it right off. And, uh, that bearing is the one that's up against, uh, when you're standing at the lathe, that's the left hand side of the screw. Anyway, that's it for this video. So uh, scroll down, hit the like button, leave some comments if you have them, questions, uh, etc. And um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't. I'll see you in the next video.